Hey everybody, I have a very special process video for you this evening. So I am hosting a challenge over at Miranda's Facebook group. If you're not sure who Miranda Weber is, I will link her YouTube channel in the description box. She is fabulous. I will also link her Facebook group in the description box. She hosts a lovely uh, scrapbook crop every month, which with loads of challenges, lots of people host them. I am hosting a challenge this evening. So my challenge is to create a scrapbook page using a card sketch. Um, here is the card sketch I'm going to be using today, but as part of the challenge, I have given um, everyone the option of four different card sketches. So if you wanna check those, for card sketches out, you are more than welcome to and um, play along. This is the card sketch that I am going to be taking and using as a scrapbook layout today. So that'll be super fun, right? Okay, so for products, I am going to be working, first of all, I'm creating a layout that has four three by four pet photos on it, but the photos are from a tea, the tea party. So if you have been, um, hanging around and you're not a new subscriber. I attended a tea party that one of my friends threw and I have been slowly but surely working my way through all of those event pictures. And today will be the last layout. So I have four photos left. All the four photos are horizontal and three by four, but they include people whose uh, permission I do not have to put them onto uh, a YouTube video. So instead I have cut three cardstock dummy photos and we're going to use those today and then I will just put the photos in after I have photographed and everything. I'm going to be playing with this set, fabulous stamp and pattern paper set from Adorn It. So for my layout today I have kind of embraced this idea of using card um, traditional card supplies, card making supplies on my layout. So I have these beautiful tea party stamps from Adornet. I've colored them using my Zig markers and I use very simple coloring with my Zigs. So I just had a smattering of color. I colors, I didn't use a lot of shading. I was really very simple, very simple coloring. So my plan is to fussy cut uh, pieces of this. We're going to use this as our title and I'm going to put the information from the tea party here and then this will be kind of like the opening page of the tea party. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to fussy cut this uh, but I have a plan to share with you how we are going to use this paper because I have a really cool idea for how to make it um for using eight and a half by 11 paper on a 12 by 12 layout. I have a really cool idea in my head that I wanna try, so we'll see how it goes. But we're definitely going to be using this paper because it's absolutely beautiful and I love it. And so we have um, our paper and our embellishments from Adorn It. Our four photos our card sketch. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started on this layout. First of all, I want to show you a little hack that uh, I'm going to use to create the look of having a pattern paper backed by white cardstock on a layout. So I've cut this white cardstock to 11 by 11, which gives me a half an inch border around the edges. And then I have a second piece of white cardstock here. Now, the first cardstock piece that I trimmed down to 11 by 11 is one of my good Coconuts World cardstocks. The second cardstock that is 12 by 12 is super thin, what I like to refer to as crap stock. Um, so it's not great paper. It, it probably came from a friend or it's probably been in my stash for decades. Anyway, I keep all 
of my colored paper for just this occasion. So I'm gonna grab some Tarot Tape from Spiegel Mom Scraps and I'm putting it across the back of the good 11 by 11 cardstock. And I'm gonna adhere it to the piece of not so good paper. But I did not, you'll notice I didn't put this Tarot Tape on the edges. I put it in the middle because I want to be able to lift up that first piece of cardstock. And here's why. So I could have chosen any one of these eight and a half by 11 papers. Any of them would have worked. Uh, I chose the most difficult one to do this with. So, you know, that's good. If you have a piece of paper that is a little more, um, like tone on tone, you'll be good. Um, but, and it doesn't matter because you're going to see, I'm going to do the same technique with this. So I have eight and a half by 11 paper. This is the paper that comes with the tea party products over at Adorn It. And everything I use, all the stamps and the paper will be linked in the description box for you. I put some of my tape runner on the back of this strip of paper and I am tucking it and adhering it to the crap stock right along the edge. So basically that thin paper is literally just being used to hold my border in place. There, that's it. That's what it's being used for. So I'm lining up the borders. I'm lining up the patterns all the way down on this layout. I hope that you're kind of getting this. So I'm going to line everything up and now I have one side of this paper bordered and I'm pretty much going to, it's almost like paper piecing a little bit um, because now I can, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the floral borders, which are the borders that stopped when I did the side and I'm going to put them across the top of my papers. So the point of this and the reason I'm showing you this is because I don't ever want anyone to feel like they are limited in what they can do because they are using paper that is not 12 by 12. You are not limited. You can use eight and a half by 11 papers on 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts. Sometimes you just have to think out of the box just a little bit. What is also really cool about this particular um, hack, I guess we'll call it a hack, a technique, is that I'm not using full sheets of paper. I'm just using three quarters of an inch. And that bottom paper that I am, that I used to create the border that I'm covering over, this paper could be any color. It could be any weight. It doesn't matter. You, we all have papers in our stash that we don't like. We all have papers in our stash that were no, we are never going to put to good use. So this will help us to put them to good use. And when this page is all done, you can't even tell. And that's with a busy, like this bordered background. If I had done this with, um, you know, a stripe or a, um, a polka dot or tone on tone paper or something, you would, you would, you would even be able to tell even less. The seams on this paper matched up perfectly. It worked really well. I love how it turned out. I think it turned out perfect, but because I knew that I wasn't going to be adding a ton of color to the actual layout. I mean, you, you guys saw my sketch. It's pretty simple. This layout is a pretty kind of a simple layout. Um, so I knew that it could handle a, a nice bold pop of color around the edge. And like I said, you can't even tell, which is so cool. So there's a little hack for you. If you have eight and a half by 11 papers that you love and you want to use them on a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout, and you're looking for ways to bring the pattern and the paper into your layout a little bit more, this is a really great way to do it. So the sketch that I chose for uh, 
the card sketch that I chose has this kind of large piece a little bit off to the side and that's where you're going to put like your sentiment and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I have a 5 by 11 piece of this beautiful purple paper and I'm actually going to go ahead and trim it down and create a kind of a banner shape at one end and then I'm going to go ahead and put three of my photos onto it. Now as I work through and do this layout you will notice that it looks a little bit like white on white on white. And that's because my pictures aren't on there. But once I finish this layout and once I put my photos on here, it looks gorgeous. So just kind of keep that in mind that these white pieces that I'm putting down here on the finished layout will be bright, colorful tea party pictures. My fourth photo is actually going to come down into the lower right hand corner and then above that photograph I'm going to put my little teacup that says you're invited to a tea party and I can add all of the vital information to the tea party that I attended onto there. So now I am going to go ahead and play with these other stamped images and find cute little homes for them. Again, as I put this layout together, it's going to look um, very simple because of the white. It's, it's going to look like you want to add more to it. I, I had a hard time. While I was putting all of these little pieces together, I kept putting the photos down and then pulling the photos back up to make sure that the finished layout wasn't going to look as underdone, let's say, as the, the original. But I also knew that I didn't want to add so much that when I put my photos down, it was super busy. So I'm just creating these little clusters. I have the perfect photo for that little sentiment that says T for two. So I knew that I wanted that wanted to put that down in the lower left hand corner and then I only attached it by the bottom and that way when I was finished taking the photographs and put the photos onto this page that bottom that bottom picture tucked right in perfectly underneath that t for two sentiment so I have the three main elements that I want for my layout you can see I skipped and decided not to put that extra teacup in it wasn't fitting nicely anywhere and now I have all of these floral pieces and I want to go ahead and kind of take these clusters and tuck in and add the different floral pieces around these three areas of my layout. The last little element I'm going to add are these hearts. These hearts are so cute. I stamped a whole bunch of them and colored them and they're going to act as my confetti as my little last little detail touch and I'm going to move them around a little bit because I'm trying not to put the purple hearts on the purple paper. That was my goal as I was moving these around. And I can't add these cute little stamped images without adding some glossy accent details to them. So all the hearts got glossy accents, the centers of all the flowers got glossy accents, and then the tea in the teacups got glossy accents too. And there it is, our layout is finished. You will find all the links you need to play along with my challenge, as well as all the links to uh, the products that I used for this layout in the description box below. Have a wonderful Saturday and a fabulous weekend. Bye.